you saw some libel stuff when Dr. Polito uh, presented his. I'm going to go more into kind of the guts of libel looking at it. And really, uh, a lot of what GlyphWorks is about is being able to look at data real quick and see what you have and draw some things out of it. Um, this is a summary of what we're going to talk about, Alicia, uh, and we'll skip over that. Some simple Weibull analysis using the ENCODE Weibull calculator glyph and the regular display glyph and uh, some of the things that we do with it, that and how to read the Weibull. Uh, Felicia consists of four divisions. I work in the exhaust division, uh, which we call emissions. We're the sixth largest auto manufacturer in the world. Uh, the emissions group is 6.7 billion euros and multiply that by 11, 1. 11 percent to figure it out in dollars. So I know you're all pulling your phones out to do that now. So anyway, GlyphWorks uh, incorporates a number of small tools. Uh, and one of the small tools that's kind of useful from time to time is the Weibull calculator. And remember this morning they talked about the median uh, filter. It really used, GlyphWorks is really built up of a lot of little tools and then they put them together and sew them together and we see them in these glyphs. And it uses that median, median filter to calculate what's called median rank. And one of the nice things is you can see your data real well, and we can show with this the desired reliability and confidence. And reliability is, if I say I want 90% reliability, that means if I test 10 parts, nine of them go to whatever this bogey is and it passes. If I say I want 90% confidence level, that says if I want to test 10 parts this time, I get 90% of them to pass, 9 of them. If I test them again, I still get 9 of them to pass, and so on and so forth. And out of 10 repetitions of that test, only once will I have fewer than 9 pass. So my confidence is how many is, will I be able to repeat this test over and over and over and still get the same answer? Uh, Weibull in itself is, shows the confidence bound, and it shows the best fit in here, and that's called the slope or the beta number. And this is your confidence. Everything over here, in this case, it's a 95th percentile. 5% of your data is over here. Okay? The other 95% is over here. This is the bad area. Weibull plots start with 10 down here. That's the 10% that fail. Okay? And one of the nice things is GlyphWorks can, makes it easy to generate either single-sided or double-sided. The double-sided one would have a second line running right along here. Okay? And the confidence interval would be, would be between those two lines. Okay? And Weibull in and of itself is very usable and amenable to small sample sizes. That's what we get in testing. Hopefully not the one-part guy, but, but we test 12 parts and we test 15 parts. And you would probably remember from some statistics course that you need to see 30 parts, right? Um, Weibull uh, allows you to deal with smaller parts by about an order of magnitude. Typically, what we're concerned with is the lower percent of our graph. You guys have all seen this Gaussian distribution and know that one sigma and two sigmas and standard deviations and 1.29 standard deviations below the mean is 90% reliability. Well, that's 90% reliability with a 50% confidence level. If I want a higher confidence level, I have to come over here more. Okay? 90% of the distribution is up in here. Okay? And so we will say we want a 90% reliability with 90% confidence. Well, that means really there's another line over here as if we had a little distribution around here, right? And, and so that we know that if we repeat it, we would have a line right along up there, parallel to the 1.29 standard deviations below. And we all remember that one standard deviation is 63.2% uh, above the mean in the Gaussian distribution which is kind of real nice. Our problem is our proving grounds may be designed to represent the worst 90% of the drivers ever, okay? 
And that's Tony Stewart, and because we're from Columbus, Indiana, we can pick on Tony Stewart. He's a neighbor of mine. He's about a mile away. I live out in the country. And uh, so what happens if my worst parts down here are driven by a vehicle that Tony Stewart's got? And he's, he actually owns a Cadillac. And so if his Cadillac has a problem right there, I'm in trouble. Okay? So that's our big concern. Okay? In metal fatigue, first of all, all these distributions I showed you so far in Galaxy is normal. Dulcet curve. Okay? Our data isn't typically Gaussian. It's somewhere between normal or log normal, and which means it's got a tail like this uh, green line right over here. It's got a tail. That's a log normal distribution. So we're usually not concerned about data way over here on the right. Those are the God parts. They're going to live forever. We're more worried about the data in here, and that's one of the nice things about the Weibull plot. It shows those kind of uh, curves uh, very well and what's going on way over on the left hand side. Weibull distributions are characterized by an equation and I put the equation in here and I'm sure that all of you uh, want to deal with that equation. Uh, beta is called the shape number. okay? And these all are different shapes and the Weibull family of distributions can characterize any of them. Eta is the 63.2% inflection point. Remember from your calculus when a curve comes down and then changes from sloping down to sloping that way, that was an inflection point. Eta is the 63.2% inflection point in any Weibull distribution. So you can line them up. If you have a log normal distribution and a Gaussian distribution, you line up the 63.2% points and you can know how bad it is going to be down here. How bad is it? Or good. Okay? 63.2% of the data are to the left of that inflection point. Okay? And as I said, a normal distribution is one standard deviation. And by the way, Weibel was a strain gauge guy, actually. When he was doing this, he was investigating strain gauge material, the metal that goes into strain gauge. Uh, so we're characterizing the distribution of failures for very full, small sample sizes. We've done probably a thousand FN curves, literally, at our group. And other members of my group can tell you all about that, too. Uh, but typical, you test 12 to 14 parts at two loads, sometimes three. And uh, again, you saw an SN curve uh, earlier, only this one goes the way Bowler uh, liked it, in which cycles go across the bottom and, and your load range up and down here. And so you got two loads along here, the blue parts. But you can, and here's the 90 percentile line, the R90C50 line running along there, okay, but you really can't tell what that spread about that curve is, and you could impose a little Gaussian or non-Gaussian distribution here and make some statements, but it's real hard to see. That's why Weibel data. Plus, Weibel data is very insensitive to the runout conditions. If I have a part way out here that I quit testing at 2 million cycles, so that's good enough to quit. It's in relatively insensitive to that. And typically, we suspend uh, target cycles uh, at 2 million or 2.5 million in testing. Okay. Plus, we can read the reliability and confidence levels right off the plot. Here, this line here is our 90% reliability line. Everything up here is 100% minus the 10%. That's the 90% up here. This in this graph is a 5% confidence line. So 5% of our data is over here. The other 95% is over in here. Okay? It's on a log-log scale. So the fat part of the region where I'm really worried about in these 13 parts that are tested here is my biggest part of my log scale. And over here is my one suspended test at 2 million cycles, by the way. Okay? And here's the basic flow. And there's two of the Weibull glyphs in here, and you can drop Excel files, or you can drop just one Excel file and pull each individual set of channels out. And the median ranks, like I said, are calculated. Those are the points along this line, the R50 line, this basic center line here is called the R50 line. 50% 50 of the parts at any one level are over here, and 50% are on the other side. And 
the slope of this line is that shape number. And up here, there's a dotted line on the Weibull graph that's at 63.2% inflection point there. And you can get it to calculate the median value at the 5% line, the median range. And all it does is it lines all the 13 parts up and then calculates the percentage at each of these points along this line. And, uh, and you, I'll show you an equation that you can calculate it for yourself for any confidence level or anything. So then you can pull the metadata out and read all the information. Here are the median confidence values and uh, for the lower line, and here they are for the center line with the data point. Okay? So, it's important to note, these are in log scale. The vertical line is percentages, percentages to failure. The horizontal line is cycles to failure. And you can see each of these points, here is the median value here, and here's the 50% value. And you can see that some of these points fit a curve real nice, and others don't fit so well. So you can pull some other information out. I have three parts that ran almost 100,000 cycles here. Does that mean that I really I've got some sort of interval testing? The guy went to lunch, and he comes back, and it, he says, well, I'll be back. It'll be right at about 100,000 cycles. He gets back, and some of the parts have failed already, but he didn't catch it when they failed or whatever. That might be uh, a concern. Uh, if you see a curving like this sort of shape, that might mean that you really need a three-parameter Weibull, which is kind of beyond the scope of this talk. Or if you see it flatten out like this. Most of our parts run between log normal, which is two, and normal, which is uh, Gaussian, which is a beta of three. And the um, that describes the slope of this line. Now, if you see a five or so, that's a logistic line. You get much steeper than that. You need to ask if really now I'm, am I running in the plastic fatigue because I'm actually breaking the parts very close to each other. Okay, so I talked about the lower confidence interval line. And we see that again here. The 50% confidence interval line. This is the best fit line down through here. Okay, and the data it puts out, it tells us where this eta value is at 63.2%. And it tells us the shape number. And it also gives us a correlation number. That's how tight is the fit to this line. In this case, it's about 85%, which is a pretty good fit. And this one is almost log normal. It has a beta value of 2.11 in this particular case. And you can read off of that, and in the data, it will tell you where the R50, C50 is, right at 50%, right here. And there happened to be a point right up there. I wonder how that happened. And uh, you can tell where the R90, C50 point, that's that 1.29 standard deviations below the mean if this were a Gaussian distribution, which it isn't. Okay, and you can also come over here and get an R90, C50. Uh, 95 point. And uh, here's the values identified, 63.2%. Here's what the R50 is in terms of cycles here. And the R90C50 in terms of cycles, you come down here. And, uh, and, this, and again, I talked about the correlation. Okay. And here is the data extracted from the metadata. It's uh, 1.58 times 10 to the fifth, 158,000 right here. This is 100,000, here's 200,000, uh, is your R90C95 value. And um, then the, this is the other uh, set of data. And it shows the R50, it shows the R90C50, and the 1% point in here which is kind of nice because 1% down here, you need to know that where is kind of my one part in 10,000 or one part in 100,000 kind of point. Um, so calculating the percent reliability point is 
uh, at each point. It's called finding the median rank. And this can do, you can do this in Excel with the beta inverse function. And it's beta inverse. And use the confidence value, the median rank. And those values vary from 1 to 13 in this example. You 1 to 6 if you only have 6 parts. And the number of samples. In this case, it's always 10. And, uh, or N. And so, in this case, we would just put 13 in here and say, if I wanted to know the fourth median rank, I'd put 0 0.05, 4, and then 13 minus 4 plus 1. Okay. And alternatively, if you know the 50% median rank, which is what we're calculated with, uh, uh, you can then go into the get squares multi column calculator and calculate it for any other median rank, say, the 5% one. And again, that's kind of beyond the scope of this course, but you could also do it as I showed you in Excel with the beta inverse function. And um, Weibull tests by load level. Okay, normally we don't just test 13 parts at one load level, right? We test six parts here and six parts here, or six and seven. Okay, so here's two sets of parts tested. Okay, the very first thing I want to know is. At R50, C50, are these guys separate enough that I'm pretty sure that they're not overlapping? Because if they overlap, my SN curve isn't going to be any good. Okay? I want these to be these kind of averages to be maybe uh, five to six times different. Okay? And when we test metal, metal fatigue, especially since our joints can be welded joints, if I have an average of 500,000 in a number of parts. We get a lot of spread. That is, the lower number might be half of that, 250,000. And the upper number might be anywhere from two to two and a half times, or a million and a quarter up here. And here's my, here, for example, is a part that actually we had a suspended test at 13, at 13 parts. It was uh, at 10. The other thing, when I looked at this, both of these have very similar beta shapes, okay? That's good, okay? If my low load has a very steep curve, high beta value, and this has a very low curve, I'm probably testing too close to the plastic fatigue we get. And we're running out of time. So anyways, in conclusion, Glyphworks makes uh, visualization of data pretty easy. It's fast, it's flexible. Okay, Weibull Plot's a nice, strong analytical tool that you can drop data points in just from a spreadsheet, from a co uh, comma-separated variable, uh, or uh, like an Excel spreadsheet or CSV file. And you can easily find the reliability and confidence rankings to do that. And I can do this with for either a double or single-sided thing. Like if I were cutting sticks into... Uh, yard sticks and meter sticks. I'd want to know both the long end and the short end, wouldn't I? Okay. But most of the time, in metal fatigue, we're only concerned with single-sided data. Okay.